Hello everyone. Welcome to the first video for Introduction to Proofs. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. I'm from the University of Toronto Mississauga campus. This video is appropriate for everyone who is taking an Introduction to Proofs course. At the University of Toronto Mississauga, this is called Math 102, but this is suitable for any similar course about an introduction to mathematical proofs. So the learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, participants should be able to prepare themselves for this course and describe the agony and the ecstasy of mathematics. We'll see what that means a little bit later on in the video. If that's a little bit scary, good. If that's a little bit exciting, that's also good. An overview of this course is that this course should take about 12 weeks to complete. The textbook that we're using in Math 102 is uh, An Introduction to Mathematical Proofs by Professor Shai Fuchs. And our course website is this Quercus course, which you can read the URL right here if you want. All of the documents for this course will be posted there and they will be publicly, publicly available. The prerequisites for this course are high school math, um, and mostly we just need you to be able to compute algebra. Um, there will be some algebra um, and we'll use concepts from high school, but we won't use that many. We, we assume that you're like somewhat comfortable with, with doing basic computations, although this course won't be about computations. Before we get into the material for today, we want to look at what are the learning objectives for the whole course? So what is it that we're trying to accomplish um, by the end of the 12 weeks? And more specifically, what do we hope that you will be able to do by the end of it? This can be summed up in two uh, bullet points. By the end of the course, you should be able to communicate mathematically and think mathematically. That's what this is. It's an introduction to proofs course. Now, Let's break that down a little bit further. What does it mean? What do we mean when we say communicate mathematically? Well, we mean that you should be able to communicate mathematical ideas, arguments, and proofs using the language of mathematics. This includes the terminology and notation in an accurate, precise, and coherent way. One thing you might notice is that when someone tries to explain a math concept, it's quite challenging. And oftentimes the person who's explaining it and the person who's uh, receiving the explanation aren't always on the same page. Uh, it can be quite confusing and there can be lots of misunderstandings. So in this course, we try as hard as we can to communicate in a way that is precise and accurate and that both parties will agree on what's being said and uh, what's being meant. The second part of communicating mathematically in this course is we want you to be able to parse a mathematical statement about some fundamental mathematical notions and objects, such as sets, functions, divisibility, and relations, as well as the properties of these things. So by the end of this course, you should be able to read and understand any mathematical sentence. And whether or not you can fully understand like the consequences of it and why it's so important, that's a different conversation. But here we just want you to be able to read mathematically. The second bullet point is to think mathematically. So the first bullet point is about being able to speak the language. And the second bullet point is about meaningfully contributing. So what does it mean to think mathematically? Well, we want you to be able to identify and implement methods of proof. So for example, proof by contradiction or proof by induction that can be used to prove a given mathematical statement. So by the end of this course, for simple statements, um, we'll give you simple mathematical statements and you should be able to determine which proof technique you'll go you're going to use to solve it. Second thing is by the end of the, this course, you should be able to detect flaws and gaps in a mathematical argument and identify ways to fix them. 
So writing proofs isn't just writing proofs on your own, it's also being able to evaluate arguments. So this will be someone else's argument. Someone will say, hey, what do you think about this, this proof I gave? And you should be able to say, ah, well, I don't really understand what's going on at this step. I don't really understand what's going on here. Um, this part is, is false. So you should be able to do that for other people's arguments. You should be able to do that for your own arguments, maybe most importantly. And you should be able to do this for other people, um, mathematical writing you read or the professors. You should be able to detect um, mistakes in what they've said. Finally, our last stage of thinking mathematically is going to be able to adapt ideas and techniques in given proofs to solve new problems. In the problems that we face in the course this year, uh, we're going to see lots of different techniques and lots of different uh, proofs and arguments and clever ideas. And what we want you to be able to do is to take those and adapt them in new situations. One of the main structures of this course is going to be that we'll give you one or two problems that use a technique, and then you will be expected to apply that technique in a place that you've never seen it before. So you're going to be solving new problems um, that you've never seen. This is quite a difference from high school. So in high school, the structure typically is, here's an algorithm or a technique, here's 20 examples of someone doing it, now we want you to apply it. This is not what this course will look like. For the most part, there won't be simple rote memorization and application. You're going to be able, you're going to have to take the ideas and the techniques and apply them in new places. Now the agony and the ecstasy. So take a moment to reflect on the following question. What feelings come to mind when you think about doing math? You can pause the video if you want, write down four or five words, what comes to mind when you think about doing math? So some words people might say are frustration, Frustration, uh oh. Frustration. Maybe um, challenge. Some people might say fun. What about um, joy? Um, the words that uh, the author Edward A. Scheinerman uses are agony and ecstasy. So you can think of the other words that you would add. Now, there's something interesting here, which is that some of these words are quite negative, frustration, agony, pain. And those are things that are you, you've probably felt as you've done mathematics throughout high school or maybe even through university. Um, nothing seems to make sense. Everything's terrible. Um, it just makes you feel stupid all the time. And it might surprise you or it might be strange to you that words like fun and joy and ecstasy might be involved here. And all of these things exist simultaneously when we're doing math. Um, math is hard for all of us, and math makes us feel stupid a lot of the time. But together with it, it comes with some ability to explain things and some beauty and fun and joy as well. Now, if you've never had the opportunity to feel the ecstasy of mathematics, then you've spent your entire mathematical careers being frustrated and being in pain uh, with math. So here are two questions, two puzzles or riddles if you want, that will help you get to the ecstasy part of it. And we'll see that in the next video.